What's going on guys, it's Boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Today is going to be the day one of my Florida Hollywood Hard Rock adventure. There's a WPT going on. I love coming down here and uh, I just landed. There's a $10,000 tournament right now that's going on currently. I just flew in, ready to hop in, but I wanted to show you guys my lovely view of the Wawa right there. And uh, you know, the grass is always green here in Florida. It's, it's a nice day, but from the Holiday Inn Express, I'm gonna hop over to, <laughs> to the Hard Rock right now and hop into the $10,000 tournament. I'm not entirely sure what this video is gonna be like, maybe a compilation, a montage of tournaments, and hopefully I win all of them. But that's it, $10,000 buy-in today. Let's get settled in, heading over to the Hard Rock right now. All right, made it. And just to show how much of a donk I am, I'm here at the Hard Rock Hollywood. <sighs> Always spilling shit on me, but uh, here for the 10K, here's the tournament room, and a lot of people are playing already. I look like I somehow peed on my shirt. Oh well. Let's hop into the tournament and try not to spill chips, I guess. This Florida trip starts off with this $10,000 buy-in, and we have 100,000 chips to start. Level 3, blinds are 1,000, 2,000, 2,000. They pick up 10 9 of clubs in the small blind. Action starts off with the button, our buddy Anthony, raises it up to 4,500. Here, out of position against a late position open, I decide to just make the call, and the big blind calls as well. So we're going to a flop, which comes pretty good, in 8, 7, 4, 2 diamonds here. I check, big blind checks, and the button throws out a bet of 7,500. A little bit large here, as I'd expect. And here, I have a decision to make. With the open-ended straight draw, two over cards, I decide to just make the call. Big blind calls as well. So now we're going three ways to the turn, which is another 8. Board is paired, and I think about my decision for a while here. Which player is going to have the most amount of eights here in this spot? Well, I think I certainly could have a good amount, and I think the big one can as well. So is this card relatively favoring me over my other opponent? Not necessarily, but I do want to experiment with a different play style and lead. This is to bet out 13,000, experimenting with something different. The big one ends up folding, which is great. And now onto Anthony on the button, and he, he thinks the decision over for a while and ends up just making the call. We've definitely got a pot brewing and the river comes another four double paired board and here on this river i think again if i bet here i'm basically representing a full house or nothing and here this is one of the times where i have nothing and in one of these cases where i am trying to rep a very very strong hand and be polarized i'm going to bet as large as humanly possible i essentially go all in betting 99,000 leaving myself with just one chip behind and onto our friend Anthony here. He uses one time chip, uses another time chip. A minute 30 goes by after three total chime chips, putting our friend into quite the blender and he ends up making the call. Nice hand, Anthony. Just like that, our $10,000 buying goes down the drain. He has seven six of clubs for just middle pair. And finds the pretty sick hero call. Gotta say, you can't outplay someone who's better than you. I'm out of this one. I almost got him to fold at least with my 10 high. But this time, I didn't have it. And I'm gonna lose. Fun fact, everyone. Did you know that I am down like 200,000 here in Florida Hard Rock after like four or five trips? <sighs> Add another 10,000 to that list. I'm gonna buy in for another bullet. But yeah, unfortunate. I wonder how well I played that hand. Probably a punt, maybe. But gotta, gotta give props to Anthony for making the call. We're off to bolt number two. After the rebuy line, we are back in this tournament for another $10,000. Pick up pocket kings. Good way to start off the second bullet. There's an under the gun open. Our buddy Mike Wang opens it up under the gun to 6,500. Here, I set the three bet because I obviously have a very nice hand. I three bet to 19,000 and our buddy makes the call here. So we're going in position to a flop of ace, jack, four, two clubs. Don't love the ace high board and three bet pots. Of course, kings are ace magnets. So when my opponent checks it over to me, I'm going to have to bet and represent a very strong hand here of course and i bet small 9,000. luckily he snap folds so we're gonna take this one down and shipping up at the very least and we slug down at another premium back in the cutoff a whole orbit later pick up ace king off suit we get the low jack to raise things up to 6,000. Kristen foxen is our opponent in this hand she's off of a relatively short stack of 60,000, and i set the three bet on the smaller side to 17,000. she ends up making the call and we're going heads up to a flop which is glorious in ace three five two hearts. This time we want to see an ace on the board. My opponent checks it over to me and I'm going to start off with a small bet as I typically would do all the time. 4,500, we make it and she makes the call. 
Turn comes the five of spades. So middle card paired, two flush draws on the board. Very dynamic card for sure. And when my opponent checks once again, I'm going to size up to a sizing where I can get it all in by the river. I bet 10,000. And once again, my opponent makes the call for 10,000. So hoping to get it all in on the river here. The river is in the eight of clubs. Complete brick. Love to see that. And when my opponent checks one more time, we know what I'm about to say. It's those two great words all in for about 30,000 ships effective. And my opponent goes into the tank here saying she has a good hand and ends up folding? Let's her cards go. Seems really rough, but nice to chip up and win. I mean, it's hard to really understand what my opponent could have had by folding here. If she folded an ace, then I get completely owned. And uh, outside that, it's still nice to win this next pot. So that hand came in level four, level five, six, seven, go by, and we are card dead here in this next spot, three or four levels later. We have ace, queen, off suit, blinds of increase, and we're on the button. There's a plus one shove of 62,000. Cut off reshoves covering the entire table on my right, and I peel ace, queen, off suit off of like 23 big blinds, give or take. Yeah. I think my hand is certainly good enough to go with it here. Got a gamble, and I have two very, very strong cards, so I'm all in as well. Hoping to win a flip and a really big one. We see early position player shoves the jack nine of clubs for two somewhat connected cards. Cut off as a pair, pocket seven. So I'm very, very live with my ace queen. We're off to a run out. I end up spiking the turn, but the river jack allows the early position player to triple up. Ah, that river pretty much hurt as I could have had absolutely piles. But after paying the early position player, I had about 80,000 left in my stack. So I end up doubling up out of my 80,000 remaining. So at the very least, I win like 19,000 chips at the end of the day here. I certainly could have had piles. I could have had over 300,000 chips, but sitting here with 160,000, so be it, but we have good news. I've chipped up to over 200,000 chips in this next hand. I pick up pocket kings on the big blind. Action gets a little crazy here. Button raises to 12,000. Small blind three bets to 36,000. Same player that I've been battling with, my buddy Anthony. And here, what an amazing spot to be in. Obviously, I have a premium, but also it's a very good spot to look like I'm trying to squeeze. So with 200,000 on my stack, I decided to essentially min click it to 80,000. Almost a min raise here to give my opponents enough rope to potentially bluff shove or just make the call facing a really good price. Anyways, the button ends up folding and the small blind takes his time and then announces all in. Let's freaking go. Come on. Let's hold with the kings I call. He has ace five suited. I'm in great shape to double up here for four starting stacks, which is massive early on in this tournament. We're off to a run out and fuck. What a turn. Drills the wheel. I'm drawing stone dead after the turn. Brutal way to lose this one. I say goodbye to the second time today to this $10,000 tournament. It's a minus $20,000 day. GG's the 20 day today. On to tomorrow, I guess. There's always something tomorrow. Gonna walk back to my room now. That wasn't very fun. How's 10K? I hope you're doing this dance right now in your head. <laughs> Alright, update. I did say that this the 10K was the last tournament I was going to play today. Turns out, I'm not. So, we're all going to max the $1,100 tournament. Turns out we all have a $500 last longer. So that's going to be fun. Ethan's an asshole. We may- oh, Fuck you, Joe. We may or may not be a couple drinks in. Anyways, we're going to max late reg with like maybe 20 big blinds. With $1,500, $2,000 at stake with this $1,100. Alright, it's a shit show. Let's just, let's, let's just win a flip or something like that. I don't know. I want to take this guy's money. That's really all that matters. You win no flips. <laughs> You're going to get shit show. We Welcome show to Florida. God damn it. <laughs> One last tournament to end the day. There is an $1,100 to max. We are obviously a couple drinks in with a few few friends and here we're maxing this and we pick up ace jack offsuit with 17,000 chips. There's an unling gun shove for 16.5k. Action folds to me and I mean this opponent shoved for about 10, 11 big blinds under the gun. Ace jack offsuit, not loving the situation but good enough cards to call and he only shows pocket aces. Oh, 
Wow, never would have guessed that in my entire life to see an 11 big blind shove from only position. I lose, GG's, very fun time in this $1,100 tournament. I literally lasted one hand. All right, that was fun while it fucking lasted. God damn it. How do you have aces? Who shows up with aces? I lose the $1,100 in the buy-in. I lose 500 in the last longer because I was the third person knocked out. Uh, or second person knocked out out of the, the group. And that's it. Maybe we should add a ticket to this thing because I think this forward ship's going to get pretty expensive just like all the other ones. So, um, all right, on to tomorrow. Hey. Actually, though, actually on to tomorrow. Hey. There's Bucky. He's very Wait, drunk. No, I didn't bust Rampage. He's very, very Sorry. drunk. All right, so the next day after busting the tournaments, I'm going to have a break day, a little, little self-care day. I actually didn't play any tournaments at all here in Florida. I actually played and streamed some online poker on WPT Global. And I have a straight draw, I have a flush draw, I have all of the sets, and some two pair combos, and I, uh, and he's raising massive, and maybe we just get this one in sometime? I could, I could realistically raise again here, and that's just to get it in and to gamble. I think, oh yeah, I'm doing that. I'm gonna go small, and then just shove, river, shove turn. Min click it, out of position be able to get it in and then we just win but i do have all the sets here i'm not i'm not three betting the flop to fold so if he just has it then good for him but we're drawing to the nuts he has it for now he has it for now give me a 10 that's not it i need a 10 or a heart got there let's fucking go you want to play yourself feel free to click the link in the description below if you're outside the u.s and you're eligible to play then after the stream i took advantage of some half off dave and busters wednesdays with some good friends winning some jackpots left and right so shout out to nelly and joey for bringing me out and this was a much needed day off of poker after breaking three bullets the day before here are some of the jackpots that we won there is a whole nother hour of late reg how many bullets can we fire today in this one? In this 2200? Time to find out. Back in the poker Ryan, we got a $2,200 buy-in. I pick up Ace Jack off suit, 13,000 chips, and there's an only an open. An early position player makes the call. And here, off of about 25 big blinds in the small blind, I'm all in here, of course, with two very good cards. Ace Jack. I get the early position player who called to call again my all-in with pocket eights. We're off to a run out, and he Turns a set, boats up, GG's, welcome to tournament poker, we're off to rebuy once again. Second bullet of this 2200, I pick up Ace Queen, an, an improvement from Ace Jack. Can't lose this time, I don't think, but anyways, with 20 big blinds here, I raised the 2000. Later to my left, three bets to 4500, a little bit suspicious, because it's a very small raise, but action folds all the way back to the big blind player who's all in for 5000. That doesn't mean a whole lot, but... I have ace queen off suit, two very powerful cards. I'm all in myself. Snap call from Kings. What do you know? He's just got a premium. Anyways, the three way all in, hoping to win this one. Let's sweat it. I folded a king. I folded king of spades. Give me that. Oh, oh yeah, Jack. I have um, Jack not many outs anymore. Jack seven. Seven. Quick, quick exit in the 2200. This might as well have been break day number two because I played this tournament for probably less than a whole hour total between those two bullets. Oops, so that's how it goes. Let me know what you guys think about these, these videos where I just show up and lose because it's not really entertaining, but at least it's like a realistic depiction of what goes on when you play tournaments and why I might not be playing as many moving forward because I'm not really having a lot of fun. So let me know what you guys think about these because this is how it goes in these uh, Florida trips or tournament trips. Show up and expect to lose a lot. Not very fun. But moving on to tomorrow, it's a, it's a big tournament. $3,500, like five mil guarantee or something crazy. So we're on to tomorrow. All right, today's the reason why I'm here in Florida. $3,500 main, it's like a five mil guarantee tournament. This is up for grabs, this big ass trophy. This also seems to be up for grabs, another very cool trophy. And uh, here's the setup. We're about to walk into the room right now. I just wanna survive for at least an hour, all right? I just wanna survive for like an hour. And here's the room. It's fucking packed. And let's just, uh, let, let, let's just win. That's all that matters. I, I just wanna win, I wanna survive. I, I, I don't wanna fire five bolts in this. So here we go. 
This is the tournament that matters the most here in this trip with the main event coming on. You get 50,000 chips, we're in level 6, make up 6-3 of hearts on the button. You're asking yourself, why am I involved in this hand? You're going to find out. There's a hijack raise to 2,000. Cutoff makes the call, and early in these day ones, you know... It's a long tournament. I'm going to be gambling, hoping to get a big stack. I three bets 8,000 here because, you know, what else are you going to do when you look at a natural as beautiful as this? It's suited, by the way, guys. I mean, of course, you're just very standard three bet. Anyways, I get the hijack to make the call. He covers my stack, and we're going to a flop heads up, which comes 7 5 4 Bink City for us. Literally incredible as I flop a straight with 6 3. Can't ask for literally anything better than this. Anyways, my opponent checks it over to me here, and this is just a flop that I I almost never hit. So uh, I decided to check this one back, as it's very hard for me to lose this one, and I want to see if my opponent can catch up. We're going to a return, which is the seven of clubs. Brings it back to our flush draw, and my opponent starts off with a very small bet now, leading out for 5,000. I mean, no-brainer decision here. We're playing so deep behind. I want to get all the chips in the middle as quickly as possible, so I'm raising. I make it 18,000 and music to my ears, he shoves. All in. All in, call. And he shows king, queen of clubs. Fated club, one time dealer. I've been through enough pain this entire series. River, black, jack, win. There we go. It's a fat double with a very, very suspicious hand, to say the least. But this is what makes poker super fun. Big shout out to the dealer for the very sick flop who also seems to watch the channel. And finally, something going my way. All it took was the supreme natural in Baccarat. The nuts in Bach is also the nuts in poker. Let's go finding a sick double up early on. Let's keep the momentum going here, picking up pocket queens the next level. There's a low jack raise of 2200. I'm going to three bet to 6500 with a very good hand. I get the small blinds to make the cold call of my three bet. You don't see that very often. And now the big blind, who seems like a pro, four bets himself to 17.5 thousand. Wow, a lot of action. That was a mouthful of things going on in this hand preflop. I decided to just make the call of the four bet in position. And guess what? The small blind comes along as well. So casual, multi-way pot we go in a four bet pot. I mean, there's a lot in the middle going on right now, especially early on in this tournament. We're going to a flop of 877 seven, rainbow. Small blind starts with a check and the big blind bets 15,000. I'm obviously not going to go anywhere here, and I don't think I'm really allowed to raise at all. The four better in the big blind can easily be uncapped to aces and kings, and, you know, obviously I don't have as much of those. So with queens here, I'm going to make the call. Don't want to overplay my overpair, and the small blind ends up folding. So we're going heads up to a turn now, which comes another eight. So essentially, I don't think this entire board even matters at all. Essentially, it just seems like there's a bunch of napkins here, and we're trying to see who has the highest overpair. My opponent bets out once again, but a little small this time to 24,000. I think he's betting a smaller percentage of the pot. Not sure what this means, but it certainly means I'm not folding. That's for sure. I'm not convinced that I'm beat just yet. I make the call for 24,000, and we're going to a river, which comes the three of clubs. Now, my opponent does something tricky, very funky at that, and he actually checks. Now thinking, facing this check, like, does aces or kings ever check on this river card? It seems very, very unlikely. Maybe my opponent could have jacks or tens. So I'm going to try to go for it. I have 80,000 in my stack, and let's go for the maximum as he covers me. I shove for 80,000 total, and my opponent doesn't take a long time before announcing his decision, which is a fold, and he folds queens face up. Wow. I got to fold a chop. Somehow, of course, I didn't know this at the time, my shove was for value in the river, but it ended up kind of serving like a bluff if I'm getting queens to fold rather quickly. So you must have believed that I had some sort of aces, kings, or 8x holding. What an awesome way to win this hand. Very, very satisfying to see that he folded a chop. Obviously, I couldn't have expected him to be on the one other combination of queens. But yeah, we're steamrolling today, folding out pocket queens, flopping straights with 6-3. It's a good time. In the next level of play, blinds have increased, and I pick up ace-queen of clubs in the small blind. Action folds to the button player, who's been super aggressive, and we've been battling a lot so far. He raises to 3,000. And I'm going to 3-bet him for sure this time, and I size to 11.5,000. 
Don't make fun of me for the sizing here. I want it to go much, much bigger, but whatever. I made it 11.5 thousand, not a huge difference. My opponent makes the call with about 100 thousand in his stack. So try to play for all of it here somehow. And the flop comes queen, four, deuce, rainbow. As sick of a board as I could ask for with ace, queen. Very dry, top, top. I bet 8,500. Throwing out a very small bet here as I don't think my opponent would connect super heavily, but when he does make the call, I'm loving the situation and we're going to a turn which is the eight of diamonds, a complete brick. And this time I am just praying and hoping my opponent connected somehow with this queen. If that's the case, then I just get to stack him all the time. So I'm going to start off with another big bet this time on the turn to 32,000 testing and seeing what my opponent has here. And like I said, just trying to find a way to get it all in. And when my opponent makes the call once again, now, I mean, I'm just praying once again that he has a queen and he just can't fold because I'm going to be bluffing a lot of the time here to be quite honest with you. But when the river comes a queen, no way. River queen, I have trips with top kicker, I essentially have the nuts, and I decide to fake tank, all right? I fake think things over in Hollywood, because I just have to. I mean, I have the nuts, and my opponent has about 60, 65,000 left in this stack, and I already know what I'm going to be doing, but I've got to pretend like I have a decision to make, and I end up going all in. He snap calls, beats me to the middle, I show ace queen, and he has king queen. Ship the freaking Pot, baby. Over 300,000 chips in my stack from 50,000 starting. It only took a couple hours to get here, and it's insane. Finally running good, feeling really good about the situation. Obviously, it's a really gross cooler for my opponent. So nice to be on the right side of the cooler this time after a pretty brutal start to my Florida trip, and here we go. So with everything going my way, we enter level 10. It's the last level of the day, and I have over 350,000 chips in my stack. Pick up 5-7 offsuit on the big blind. Finally, not a premium, I know. The hijack starts off the action by raising to 4,500, and I have a pretty standard defend here from the big blind. So with a good price, happy to make the call. Flop comes king, seven, four, two hearts. I check it over to him with middle pair, and he bets out 5,500. I expect my opponent to be C betting probably a little too much here, but um, yeah, with middle pair, definitely not going to go anywhere. I decide to make the call. River comes a black nine. I check it over to him now, downgraded to third pair, and my opponent actually ends up checking back. So suspicious of what my opponent could have. Can't be anything super strong. The river is a three of diamonds, and I take my time and think about it for a while here. Having a five in my hand is actually quite powerful because five six is the nuts in the straight and certainly a hand that i could be holding as you know i'd call all my open enders on the flop so i think things over but having a pair of sevens has too much showdown i just have to check it over to him and now he throws out a bet of 10.5 thousand and i just just can't believe that this opponent is going to have anything super strong here looks like a recreational player and i think that if he's bluffing here i can just check raise and get him to fold all his bluffs but if he has some sort of a king, he's not going to love facing a check raise, especially from someone like me who, you know, loves to put chips in the middle. So I'm trying to put one pair like king x or even a second pair like jacks or tens to the test here. And I check raise it up to 35,000. Now turning my pair into a bluff, turning my five into a bluff, and my opponent here ends up being in the tank. It ends up calling, flicks in the chip for a call, obviously not loving it as I show my pair of sevens that could be no good. And he shows King Deuce of Diamonds. I mean, huh. <laughs> just got to chuckle, say nice hand to him. You can't really win them all, I guess, you know, after running so hot today. But, uh, you know, kudos to my opponent for raising the King Deuce and holding on to his top pair. Uh, what else are you going to do? I tried my best. This is going to be the last hand of this day. And it's fireworks. So let's get into it. Picking up 6-9 offsuit. Tihi 69 make your jokes in the comments below. I'm looking forward to hearing your best 69 jokes. Moving on, I'm in the big blind and the button raises to 4500. Happy to see a flop, so I make the call. Flop is 664 rainbow. That's right. We're back to sun running with trips. I check it over to my opponent and she bets out 4000. She's playing pretty darn deep. So, with over 2.5 starting stacks here playing a lot of big blinds deep here in this tournament, I'm trying to get more in the middle 
of course, naturally with trips. Uh, I'm gonna be check raising with a lot of air, a lot of draws, a lot of random stuff here. So with a really good hand, might as well be doing that here. So I check raised 13,000. And she does actually something a little bit uncomfortable in three bets, re-raises herself to 31,000. Oh, crap. I'm actually not feeling too hot about my hand anymore, to be honest with you. I mean, let's be honest. She could really have a better six here a lot of the time. Obviously, I, I can't fold, but like, I don't think my opponent is going to be three betting here with a hand like aces, kings, queens, you know, all those over pairs. So the value that she could have just contains of all the hands that beat mine, you know, all of the 10 six or a six and and that, that's actually it. Maybe jack six if she's feeling frisky. But um, yeah, I'm not going to fold trips, obviously, to this three bet. I make the call, but we've got a pretty big pot ballooning here. I mean, I wanted the pot to be big, but not this big this fast. We're going to a turn, which is the deuce of hearts. It brings in a backdoor flush draw. I guess three five gets there, which is open ended, but I don't think my opponent's raising that. Anyways, I check it over to her and she bets thirty five thousand. Coincidentally, you know, thirty five thousand, three five. Is she trying to signal me something here? I don't know, but uh, she has about seventy thousand trips behind, and I have a pretty easy call. Of course, not going anywhere with trips here, but I'm just hoping she doesn't have a bigger one. I don't want to be in a cooler situation. But when the river comes another deuce, double paired board now, I feel safe, I feel comfortable, and now I want my opponent to go all in. I check, she announces all in, snap call. I win because she has ace five of clubs, and I win a very, very giant pot to end the day, chipping close to 500,000 chips Nearing the end of this day, as after level 10, we all bag up for the end of day one and moving on to day two. And just like that here, amazing, crazy fireworks of a hand pot. I end up bagging second in chips for the entire flight, which is always a really good feeling to have a bunch of chips in the bag. Very successful day. Well worth it after all the pain earlier in this video. All right, end of day one. Nice to bag a lot of chips. Uh, I guess it seems like I'm like top five in chips for this day, which is always nice. <laughs> on one bullet too. It's a very smooth day. Didn't get a bluff through on the river, but outside of that, everything was great. So that's an empty uh, ballroom here. And we're on to uh, day two with a lot of chips. So this is gonna be very exciting and fun. I'm looking forward to it. And this might be the end of this video because I know it's been very long. So I might just leave you on a cliffhanger on how day two goes. Maybe you will check out the next video, but uh, I'm gonna go to bed. It's been a long day of poker. There's uh, 405 players remaining for day two uh, from this flight. So it's going to be a massive, massive tournament here. Literally already 3 million and 3 point, like a lot million in the middle. Big prize pool. Probably 1 million for first place. Let's get it.